Hey, how y'all got? How y'all got it done? Hey. And can you hear me okay? Hey, everybody. Can you guys hear me okay? I wait a um I wait a couple of minutes. I just wait a couple of minutes, you know. I'll just sit in the love for a couple of more seconds. How you guys feeling out there? You're sitting in love, understanding that no one other than yourself is needed to be in love. You have the ingrediential consciousness of love. You are in love. No one, no thing needed. You are in love. No such thing as being alone in this space. Even the word alone was manifested. Even the word being alone was manifested from a state of separation. Nothing but fulfillment, contentment. You're in love. Love is not a matter of someone else did this for you, someone else did this to you. You're living from within effortlessly. You are in love, nothing external is needed. That's the destination. In love. Learning to deem energy as sacred. Energy is sacred. Every word you speak. 
is deriving from a mindset. And so we're renewing the mind to be seated in love, as love, of love, through peace. All right, we'll sit in love for a couple of more seconds. Sit in love. Be in love. Realize that nothing else is needed. All of the external things that you have given your power to. Renew the mind to release those external connections. And sit in love right where you are. As you are. of love. Of means to be equal to. Everybody still can hear me loud and clear? That's what it means to be of, no division, no separation. Of love. All right, how's the volume now? Is it too loud or too low? Is it too loud or too low now? All right. All right. I'll start in a second. Well, we've already started. We're just sitting in love. We're learning that nothing outside of us is needed. Sitting in love. No one else is needed. No one else is needed. Love is simply the essence of who you are. And so as we take back our energy, and this can be done mentally through dissolving the mental connections, the mental external things that we have esteemed right now where you are, you can sit in love. No one else is needed. Not mattering if someone else has called. Not mattering if someone else hasn't called. Not mattering if your favorite show is on. You are love. Nothing is needed. Not mattering if something is going on in the chat. Not mattering if this or that. You simply are love. You simply are love. Imagine a man, um, 
walking and he has a glass of water in his hand and he comes across a person and he offers them the glass of water and they look at it like, what is that? I don't want that. So the man puts the glass of water down and so he walks to someone else. He presents the glass of water, holds it up, the person looks at it. What is that? I don't want that. So he keeps walking. Comes across a third person. He offers the glass of water. Person looks at them. It's like, you don't know how long I've been thirsting for this. You don't know how long I've been thirsting. Same glass of water seen in different ways. The glass of water was always the same. But you never knew the perception, the propensity, and the susceptibility of those that it was offered to. But to the one that has room for it. They understand. They see what it is. The value they place on it. Is exactly what they need. It's of great value. But to the others. They couldn't see what was being offered simply because there was no need. There was no need. There was no need. Imagine someone being in a hole. And they spent all of the time wondering, how did I get here? Who put me in this hole? I believe this person threw me in this hole. I believe that person threw me in the hole. And the fact that they were in the hole all of their energy should have went on getting out of the hole. Because they were already in the hole. But they didn't have any tools to get out of the hole. And so they thought to themselves after questioning, who put me in this hole? I'm mad at them and I'm, I'm tired. Who put me in this hole? Can't climb out of this hole. They stopped complaining. Because the complaint of being in the hole was the very thing that kept them blind on how to get out of the hole. And they became sensitive to what they were in. And they began to examine the walls of the hole, the dirt. 
and they begin to pull away at the hole, pull away at the walls of the hole until the walls were no more and they were simply on flat ground. Imagine being light beings. Starting off as pure light beings. And once you were born, you're automatically of the source of light. And you begin to think, you begin to have free will, and you dwindle down into a place of physicality. And the light up here is who you really are. So you can always go home because you're from that light. But just because you're from that light doesn't mean that you're in a realm of choosing that light. And so imagine as you're in this lower realm, you begin to complain. Who put me here? Why did I get here? If the body isn't real, wh where did the embryo start? I believe the body is made. Doesn't matter about the embryo. You are here. Doesn't matter who threw you in the hole. You can spend all of your energy. Who Put us here? Did the government throw us here? Was it an experiment? What put us here? What we do know is we're here. And so while you're here, you begin to reciprocate the things of being here. And then you begin to build buildings. And when we're first here, it began to rain. We don't know what the rain is. We just know it's coming down from the sky. We don't even know what the sky is. We don't know if it's good or bad. But we feel it on what we call our arms. And we know when it hits what we see is dirt, it turns into mud. We don't call it good or bad. It's just something we observe. We take the elements from the ground and build buildings. And instead of finding out how to return, we settle. We build the buildings to keep us from the rain. The rain wasn't good or bad. It's just something that came down. It began to snow. We don't know what the snow is. We just know it's something on our arm and we call it cold. When it hits the dirt, it turns into the water and it creates what we call mud. We don't call it good or bad. We just call it. We just make a name for it so we can point it out. It begins to hail. We see a nearby cave. We don't know what a hailstorm is, so we label it so we can tell it to somebody else. We don't call it good or bad. It just is what it is. We see an animal. It's a horse. We don't know what it is. We just hop on top of it and learn that we can go from A to B in it. We see a potato. We pick it up. We don't know if it's good or bad. We just bite it. We don't even know what hunger is at this point. It's not good or bad. It's just something we observe. There's nothing that we're saying is bad or good. The mud isn't good or bad. The rain isn't good or bad. We're just looking at it. We're just observing. it. We take the elements from the ground. We mold the mud. We don't call it good or bad. We just see that the mold, the mud takes, it takes form. 
We begin to take elements from the ground and we begin to build building cement we don't call it good or bad we just know it gets hard it gets hard so now we're going to build it over our head to keep us out of the rain it's not good or bad it's just something that we're using to keep us out of what we call rain we don't even know what rain is we don't know if it's good or bad we just we just called it rain so i'll be able to tell you it rained over there so go inside your building. Some people may not have buildings, so we ran in caves. We don't call that good or bad when we get wet. We just know when the rain comes, it gets wet. We take the elements from the ground and build cars. We don't call it good or bad. We just know just like we hopped on that horse. Now we have horsepower. We don't call it good or bad. We just say A to B. And finally, no one is trying to escape. Now it's a matter of you track the rain in the house. The car is out of gas. It rained on you. You got your clothes wet. Took the elements from the ground and made highways. You drove over here. No one is trying to exit anymore. Earth has become gossip. You know, it rained over there in uh, San Diego. I drew a line on the dirt. We call that place San Diego. They built buildings over there in San Diego. They put a sign up there in San Diego. You know, such and such jumped in the horsepower and they live in San Diego now. It rained over there in San Diego. You know it rained over and earth is just gossip of the same thing. No one knows why they are here. They created their own ascension process. We took the elements from the ground, poured it, poured concrete over the ground, drew lines on it, put signs up. Put a sign up, say Hollywood. And even though we are the true stars, now there are stars on a piece of ground. You know, such and such made it. Earth is simply gossip of something you made. Such and such made it. You know, such and such drove over there to San Diego. They made it. Your whole energy. The first two humans probably found out you can get pregnant. No, no marriage certificate was needed. Just something they probably found out. Wasn't good or bad. It's just something they found out. The first ones probably died. It wasn't, I don't know, um, such and such that went to the high school died. It wasn't a high school. It probably just died. We don't know if it was good or bad. It just was something we observed. And now we created our own narrative. You know, Tim died over there. He used to go to the building over there in San Diego. Earth is a delusional gossip. A delusional gossip. And you came from the light, which is automatically love. And so instead of returning to the love, because you're automatically the love in essence, so deep, 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 deep down, not that deep, but deep, deep down, you know what this is. But you grab at it in the ways that you see in the little simulation that you are in. Instead of returning, you grab that love from the frequency right down here. You can't get away from this because you're that in essence. But instead of returning to what it is, to the light, you grab at it from these physical places right here in the narrative. You know, I made a friend today. It's you trying to remember love in the best way you can because you can't forget it. You can't forget it. 
Let me know if you guys can hear me pretty good. Let me know if you, you can hear me. Okay, so you can't forget the love because it's where you came, but instead of returning in this physical body, you've taken on a brain. You've taken on a brain. And you can't forget love. So you grab it down here in the best way you can. You know, such and such did this today. I'm so proud of them. And in a state of separation, you did good on your test. I love you. Even though your harmony up here and all is love, there is no division. There is no test score needed. There is no accolades needed. There is nothing needed. Down here, I made a friend today. We distributed from a separate. You know what? I tell you what. We argue, but everything is good. I love. We worked it out when there was nothing to work out up here. You're distributing who you are in a lower realm. Doesn't matter what it is going on down here. It doesn't matter if somebody robbed a bank. Doesn't matter what that what they did, as hard as it is to see. They're all trying to do the best they can. And they're in a lower place with these simulated bodies trying to return, trying to do the best they can. And they can't remember the light. And instead of alchemizing the consciousness of this narrative because the consciousness of this narrative will never equal the light they set up their own terms words manifested you're this you're not that instead of being in oneness with god they fell into these places to, to say god has blessed me god has really blessed Physical beings living out a separation. God has really, when in this you were, it was all yours. Love was all yours. No, no such thing as a blessing. You are one. You are complete. You are in totality. Down here, God has really blessed me. Such a state of separation that we use the very name that we are one with. God has really blessed me. Did he bless you? God is going to bless you. Hang in there when both of us are one in God up here. Both of us are connected in source. A world in which you live out a state of separation. And so, as I tell you, the human consciousness is sleep. I'm not just saying that. I pick it apart just to make it known, but there's no room to judge each other because all of us are in the division. You are witnessing the forgetfulness of love in a lower degree. And it gets to be lived out. And so now it's in a state of fear. I can't show love because love will get me. Kindness is weakness. People are going to take kindness for weakness. I can't show that. And so you never return. Because the very mindset that calls kindness weakness, if you take the other person out, 
you yourself have put a mindset of gravity on the very mind. Nothing to be sorry about. You yourself have put on a mindset that has shrank you down into the very mindset that you're trying to escape. That's why you're trying to escape it, because you are of it. This is why I say you can't escape the simulation, because it made you. People say, I don't like small talk. The gravitational force that holds you down within the earth and narrative is small talk to a guy. But it's not a matter of just saying I'm not going to talk about it because your body is talking about it, whether you move your mouth or not. Everything that comes out of your mouth comes from the mindset that you are reciprocating within the temple of God. So even when you're not talking about it, you're talking about it. It's a matter of becoming sensitive. How do you become sensitive? Well, first, don't react. I like to break down some of the comments and questions to show you that if you take a person's comment, if you look at it in a different way, it holds no weight. It holds no weight. That's why I answer the questions or make the comments or say the things. I want to show you that words. They hold no weight. They have different dimensions and the dimension that you receive the word depends on the dimension of light in which you see from. So even the post on the community tab. If I say the person said I didn't have common sense, it's not about the person. I'm trying to show you that everything can be seen in a different perspective. We're all here. From the light. If you find a higher perspective, there will be no offense. Even if you can't find a higher perspective, compassion and understanding, understand where the person comes from. The bigger the offense, the bigger the understanding. That alone alchemizes your connection to the conditioning of the simulation. Become sensitive. Become sensitive. That's where your divinity lies. That's where your poise lies. It's not for the human to say, I'm going to have poise. We're not pour pouring poise on top of something that has to have poise. When you alchemize the consciousness that has you revved up, you will automatically sit in poise. Not a matter of doing anything. It's a matter of shifting the perspective, undressing the human consciousness. To sit in your celestiality. And so Earth is a manifestation. This matters. That matters. We got to fix this. You're fixing the external manifestations of things. This happened over here. This happened over here. Let's go fight this cause. Let's go fix this. I'm not saying don't do it, but these external things have manifested from beings. And unless the mind is changed, you're going to be fixing external things, leaping from place to place to place to place to place to place. It's, a not a, it's not about fixing the manifestation of the outside of the cup. It's about fixing the root where the manifestation of the thing came from.
This is why it's important to ascend. Well, we need to fix poverty. There is no poverty. Poverty manifested from us in this realm, chopping down pieces of paper and then distributing it to different places and causing it poverty. It's a manifestation of the beings that are here. It's a manifestation of us. Everything you see in the physical is only an expression of the spiritual of the mind. Everything that is formed is thought form. And instead of seeing the guy on the store, because there is no store as homeless, we go with the manifestation. Well, he didn't do this. So th that's hate energy. Because there's no such thing as poverty in the ethereal. You're spewing hate energy. It's opposite of this. Well, I see a building that he's laid under and man, in this paper manifestation, it manifests that he doesn't have it. I'm going to justify myself having this energy. You are now a part of the simulation. In the ethers, that man is that. The human consciousness is the blindness of the ethereal realm. You must become sensitive past the physical. Because you are spirit. You must become sensitive past the physical. It's not a matter of raising up, it's a matter of going down sometimes. Not a matter of raising up to fight the cause. Sometimes it's a matter of going down. Humility is actually not something that you do in the earthen narrative. He was so humble. That's still a part of the play. Sometimes the very crushing of this earthen narrative is humbling you in a much deeper way, way past the physical. Your spirit, the physical is being humbled. It is not the earth and mindset that's being humbled. The physical is being humbled. The dense principles of the earth and narrative are being humbled. You're returning to harmonious love. How can we be sensitive if we are reacting to the density? If you react to the density, react in a renewed mind. Just like I show you with the reactions, I break down every word to show you this can be looked at in a completely different way that holds no weight. It holds no gravity. Take the importance off of everything you do. If you go out to a place. Use it to calibrate your sensitivity. The 
the pain speaks of the density. Went from the light, why are we here? Such and such, you know, such and such track water in the house. You are energy. Being your energy is sacred. not about anything external of you. It's about being in love. And not just saying, I am in love. Changing the mindset in the same way we're talking about it. To seat yourself in an understanding of love. And just because I'm using the word understanding, doesn't mean you're standing under. And if you do stand under something, let it be love. Because if you stand under that, you will emerge as it and of it. See with your heart, become sensitive, so sensitive that you don't just undress behaviors within the earth, you undress the earth. You undress the harshness of earth and you are clothed in your natural celestial light. That is automatically your poise. That is automatically your ambiance. No mantra is needed. All of the knowledge already speaks of you. Gonna come a time when you're gonna even have to give up the knowing of the knowledge. You're not gonna recognize it as knowledge. Because sometimes, as long as you recognize it as knowledge, it's still separate of you. You're gonna be it to where you don't even recognize it. It's just you. It's just you. Not a teaching, it's not a class, it's you. You, to the point where everything you do physically, you didn't go to the park, you didn't go to work. Every place you walked, it was just love going somewhere and being that. All of the physicalities blur. No such thing as knowledge. You're not even helping anyone in your mind. It's just you. You're just being. You don't have to put I am in front of everything because it's just you. Even the knowledge will cease. Left the light. Now we see knowledge, which is information. Because we have been misinformed. Carried away by misinformation, we have miscarried. And even though we already, already existed, we were still born, still born miscarriages. And now since we were miscarried in information, we're seeking new information.
don't get so hung up on the knowledge that you forget that it speaks of you. It speaks of what you already are. Everything of importance in the earthly narrative, take the weight off it. Because there was a time when there was no weight on any of it. It was just observation. The water hits the dirt and the mud gets in. Let's just get, let's just wipe it up. But let's not react to it like we don't know that water and dirt automatically makes mud. Why should that change your energy? Why can't that just be what it does? Why can't we take the gravity off? All the things we do, why can't we do them in spirit? Why can't we be in love? If the gas price goes up, why can't we be in love? Before they created the sign to put the numbers on it, to make the concrete to build a pump, there was a time when you were loved. Gonna be what it's gonna be regardless. Why can't we be who we are? When you surrender, you will become sensitive to feel the connections of everything that you're not. But if you speak the same language of the very energy that you have to transcend, you will be blind to it. But you will come into it when you're ready. No such thing as a mistake. It has to be you. Even if you say, <clears throat> I messed up, that's not love either. That's the best time. That's a good time to be loving. It doesn't stop. No such thing as a mess up. It's an experience. I needed to feel that. I needed to feel that. I needed to see that. I needed to do that. Not a matter of just sitting in silence in a room, which is nothing wrong. Sit in silence as you commune with people, as you go to the building. Feel yourself. Feel yourself. See, did you feel a certain way when you walked into the door? Did your mood change? Be sensitive to yourself. Reevaluate. The value system that has conformed you at all times. That is the job. Because the buildings and the other things will crumble and you'll simply be spirits. Buildings were ground down, the dust, the concrete was went, went away. Cars would, you'll simply be a planet full of spirits, either in equilibrium or not. And that is the delusion. It was built, but the building of it was sustaining the very place or temperature of spirit that it manifested from, which is a good thing. Now you can climb. 
Now you can shift. It manifested into physical form. It's sometimes easier. Has somebody ever spit out an idea and then you looked at the idea and said, you know what? I would have did it like this. I would have did it like that. It's easier. Sometimes you can't come up with something. Sometimes you can't come up with something on your own, but sometimes when you see it, now you can work off that. You can bounce off. You see where you are. You see the manifestation of where you are. That is a good thing. Whether you call it hell, whether you, it's still a good, you get to see. It manifested just for you to see. Now you can be of it or you can shift out of it. How did we get here? What did we do when we got here? Who sent it? You are here. Who threw me in the hole? Who, how did you are here? When you finish figuring it, you are here. How did the body form? How did it? You are here. The very energy. How did I get here? Why did I? You are here. I'm not saying that you. Pretend my hand is the location which is here. And this is you. And you are here. I'm not saying it in that way. You are here. The very personality that is asking is here. It's one. The simulation manifested from us. You are here. You make up what here is. You are under the terms and conditions of what here is. You are here. And you're here. Which is a beautiful thing. You didn't mess up. That's the beauty. You get to see it. You get to use your energy to see where you are. You know what? I still get mad at that. You're looking at it wrong. This is awesome. I have a gauge to feel and see where I am. If I am sensitive enough to see and feel. I don't want to be here around this. I don't want to. Be. You are here. I don't want to be in this hole. You are here. Here. You are here. It's not a matter of feeling the offenses and saying, I'm just going to be loving. It's a matter of renewing the mind to understand that the very people that you are here with, they're calibrating just like you, no matter what they did. No matter what they did. It's best to look at it in a different perspective. They're calibrating just like you. Brand new beings, in a sense, in this dimension. Just because you see the consciousness says 40 or 50, it doesn't go like that. There is no, you could be in the ethers, all is the same, but I'm going to make an example. You could be older than what you're calling your grandmother or grand in consciousness. There are no bodies. It's just states of consciousness. My, my granddad or great. That's a good thing. Use that. Look at it. Observe it. They're not a body. This is where you shift in consciousness. You can very well be an advanced degree of intelligence. 
than someone that's in a body bigger than yours. If you become as a child, you're the greatest anyway. And becoming as a child is to go down, it's to return. That's what adult is. It becomes the sin, the hardening of the heart and the principle. Be kind with it. That's what adult is. It's not about age. It's more spiritual. It's the hardening of the heart without the sensitivity. When I show you the different words coming, it can mean this. It can mean that the level that you see the word in is your level of life. The level, the degree in which you see a matter is your level of light. It's your level of growth in terms of degrees of consciousness. You need this. Use this. You are much greater than what's going on. You are much greater than what's going on. Become more sensitive than what's going on. To be more sensitive to your surroundings is to have a more heightened awareness. To have a more heightened awareness. This will not seem this way with the people around you because they go by a different language. But you will have a peace that surpasses their language, a peace that surpasses their understanding. Rewrite your energies. You don't have to call them pain. Rewrite your story. It's no different than reading a book and it says Tim went through pain. No, Tim seen an opportunity. You can relabel. Fix it to where your brain receives it in a way that is just for you. Who says you can't do that? Who says you can't rewrite? Plant seeds in the garden and have a secret, sacred garden separate from the masses. Who says you can't do that? If not, your vessel or your ship will be tossed to and fro by the brain waves of others. No matter what it is, it's always a higher perspective. It's always a higher perspective. It's always a lighter code of conduct. It's always a lighter code of conduct. The person only says that I didn't have common sense because I was otherwise. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. You can't give what you don't have. If I asked you for a billion dollars, because you're breaching your, you can't give what, become love. And it exudes in your being. You don't have to give it in that sense. Become it. Become, seat your mindset in it. Shift your consciousness. You're a free being. Who said you had to operate in the same keys of consciousness as others? Put a divine intelligence to seat yourself in love. To where you don't have to show love. You are the show. You are love. Seat yourself in peace. Create keys of consciousness that seat yourself in peace and understanding.
higher perspectives. A perspective so high that you're not protecting your energy. There's nothing to protect. Even the biggest offenses are seen in compassion. You've shifted your consciousness. You've grown out of the world. Somebody could do the biggest offenses to you and you're looking in compassion. You are a different being. You're a completely different state of being. Whenever an external situation arises, there's always an internal connection that arises in you. Not a matter of trying to defeat the beast that arises out of the stagnant consciousness within you. Because to try to defeat the beast is to use the very vices to bring it forward and anger it. You must dissolve the beast. The more you swim out into the very consciousness that you descended into, the more you strengthen the beast. Not a matter of fixing the trauma. It is a matter of renewing the mindset that deemed the event as traumatic. There is no childhood in consciousness and no stolen bike. There was no classroom in which anyone called you ugly. Their energy, you can't feel them now. You only feel the past as energetic locks in your brain that keeps you underneath. Alchemize the meanings of those things and release yourself from all dimensions, all dimensions. Is reincarnation real? Is it? If it is real, don't you know you're going to go by the same terms? The same thing makes you mad. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Is it clear or is it a bit low? Okay. Is reincarnation real? How did I get in the hole? How were we here? How did if it if it is real, don't you know you're going to alchemize the very same the very same upsets, the very same setup. They say we operate in different realities. They say that, don't you know, if it's different realities, it's still the same emotional setup within the same narrative. How do I escape the loop? How do you escape the loop? Because earth is gossip. And we say, keep me in the loop. What happened over here? I'm upset. Keep me in the loop. This happened over here that 
as my emotions keep me in the loop. Instead of your brain receiving, it's reciprocating the same looping consciousness. Snake biting his tail. You're not reacting to anything external of you. It's like you're running around in circles. It's like standing in place and spinning around. No, take everything outside of you away. There's nobody out. If you continuously react to the same thing, just picture yourself standing in place and just spinning around and not moving. Even though you think you're physically going somewhere, you're doing this. Even though you physically hopped in a car and it seems like you drove to a physical place, your spirit is getting is still doing this, getting upset with the same. Your spirit is simply spinning around. The physical interface is, is void. It is the sleep. It has you sleep to the stagnant degree of spirit. It's a disguise to make you think it's something new when it's the same thing. In the spirit realm, it's A snake biting his tail. And since they go by the terms and conditions of the earth, and the earth and narrative is a state of death, sleep, routine. This is why I tell you it's simply an interface. And people think I'm just trying to sound wisdomy. And I'm not. When you become sensitive, you can see it. I love you. I can see it. Not knowledge, I can see it. It's nothing to study. It's it's just the heart. Like I can see it. The heart is calibrated to a very dense consciousness. Perception and reaction is sight. When a person speaks to you way before you responded, you've already responded, especially if the response comes from the reciprocation of the same earth and narrative. The response is simply a chemical reaction.
because all responses more than likely they're only made so that certain chemicals will spray out of our brain you have to jump over the fence because your unlimited state of being is on the other side of that comfort I seen a pill case before and it said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And each day had a certain pill in it. And that's how it is with us. We wake up on what we call Monday and try to distribute certain things to give us comfort. The way we respond to people is meds. We're responding in a way that we're trying to keep the the good chemicals spraying out. Wondering if they're going to be in agreement with it or not. And when they don't, we just say, you know what, something such and such really upset me today is not upset. That's a blind language. You are not a body, you are a spirit. And your goal is to alchemize the upset because it's simply an energy blockage. There's no such thing as upset. The human language is blindness. People wonder why I use different terms. The human language is blindness and justification for lower degree of spirit. I don't use different terms to sound wisdomy. The language gives way to the lower degree of spirit. You know, such and such made me up. This is not you. You are the life force that governs the body. And this is where you're from. The light that has nothing to do with what such and such did. The chemicals are controlling you. The chemtrails are are sprayed in the brain. And they're polluting the air and the air goes right along with them. You're in this plane of existence. Spraying chemtrails. Fusing the very neutral spirit that you are with chemicals in association with the resonance of the earthen narrative. You have to break out. You have to go beyond the pain by alchemizing, renewing the mind, past what a person sees. Or they're going to keep you in the loop. I'll stop this live for now. And I, I may jump back on later. But I will keep this up. So uh, for now um, to be continued. But. I'm not going to delete this live, but I will uh, speak with you guys a little later.